Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got 21 days until May, and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSEs. This lesson, testing yourself. I've already had quite a few people leaving comments on the videos in this series saying that they don't feel like the revision that they're doing is actually sinking in. They don't feel like they're getting any benefit from it. And I completely understand that. The first thing I want to do is just reassure you that's completely normal. Everyone feels like that. The first time you go through something, you probably won't feel like you've got that much from it and you're gonna to need to go back over it and do it again. But it will get better. You will deepen your understanding each time. But it doesn't all just happen instantly the first time. So don't worry, you do still have time to prepare for those exams. Now one of the ways that you can figure out if you do understand something or not is to test yourself. I've already covered a couple of ways to test yourself in previous videos on using past exam papers and the last video on using flashcards. But there are other ways to test yourself as well. This will let you figure out not just whether or not you know something, but which bits of a topic you're really struggling with. It highlights the areas of weakness so that you can focus your attention on them rather than spending a lot of time on the bits which you're already pretty comfortable with. It lets you really target your revision and make the most use of your time. So it is a crucial part of the toolbox of techniques for revision which you really should be using. At the end of each half hour of revision which you do, try writing yourself three questions on the thing which you've been looking at. Three should be plenty, if you want to do more then that will be fine. But just take the final couple of minutes out of that half hour to write three questions and write down what the answers are as well. It'd be a good idea if you put the questions on one sheet of paper and the answers on another sheet of paper. You're not going to be using that yet, but when you come back to look at that topic again in a week or two weeks, have a look at the questions first. See if you can still answer them. And if you can't, you'll be able to see exactly which things it is that you're having difficulty with. When you write those questions, make sure you focus on the bits where you need to remember information. If it's something fairly straightforward, which you're pretty comfortable with, don't worry about that. You don't need to do a question on that. Focus on the bits as you were going through that topic, which you realized were going to be the most difficult for you to remember. So the set of questions is going to vary from person to person, but make sure you are being honest with yourself. Make sure you are writing the questions about the things you found most difficult. At this point, it would also be a good idea if you let a friend know about this. Show them this video. Tell them to do the same thing, because that's going to become really important in just a minute. Now obviously you can go through the questions to test yourself, but here's a little tip. Try getting someone else involved. There are probably going to be family members, parents, brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles, grandparents. There's probably going to be someone who would be quite happy to take five minutes each day just to run through some questions and test you on them. Now it may be a topic which they know nothing about, but if they've got a set of questions and a set of answers, they will be quite happy to help you do that. They will be quite happy to see that you're doing some revision as well. You never know, it might even get you out of a few chores if they can see that you're working really hard on something else. Get them involved. It takes a little bit of the effort away from you. It gives you a bit more variety and everyone gets to see that you are working on this stuff. The reason that I said get your friends to watch this video and then write their own questions as they're going through is we can take this a step further. Because if you sit down with your friend and both look at the same topic, you'll probably have a different set of questions. Either that, or if you've got the same questions, that must be a really tricky bit that you really need to be clear on. Either way, you can then test each other. And quite often, those questions are going to be different, and so you'll get tested on a range of different things as well. It'll really expand your learning. But again, if you're both doing it, then you've actually got more of a reason to write those questions if you know that you're both going to be testing one another. And it gives you much more variety and it's going to be reinforcing that learning and it's going to be giving you something a bit different to what you've already been doing as well. This is something which you can do at school, in free time, at breaks, lunch times, before or after school or on the school bus. It's something where you could meet up with each other or go around to each other's houses to do it. Or of course, it's something which you can now use technology to use as well. So you can use things like video chat with Skype, Google Hangouts. You can also use things like WhatsApp. Set up a group. 
so that you've not just got two people submitting questions, but you've got a whole load of people having a go. You can even make it a little bit of a competition. Who can get the right answer first in the group? And take it in turns to ask the questions. So one day it could be one person asking the questions, and the next day the next person, and so on. You could have a group with loads and loads of people in there, all asking questions, all testing each other, and all collaborating to help each other and extend your own learning. And if you're really not sure, but there is a group of you, then there's a good chance someone else will be able to tell you the correct answer as well. Finally, remember, even if you can't find anyone else to test you on something, there's lots of websites and apps now which you can use to check your own learning as well. For example, my website and app, SnapQuiz. If you've got a suggestion for a good website or app, then leave it in the comments so other people can see it. Or if you've got any other suggestions to make this video series even better, then leave those in the comments as well. It's now a week since I posted the first of these revision videos. Don't worry if it still feels like you don't know much. That's more because you're looking at how much you need to know and realizing that you do have some work to do. But we've still got time. There's still a few weeks until those exams come up and if you're working through the suggestions which I've been making, you've been sticking to a routine, you will be fine. Try and stay calm, keep your head down, working through the stuff which I've given you, try the different techniques out, and when it gets round to those exams, you will be well prepared. So long as you're sticking with it, you've got time to make sure that you do understand this, and you might even find that you surprise yourself. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.